LGD and Virtus Pro continue to fight it out in the lower bracket grand final. They need one more game each, or either of them need one game, to go to the grand final and play the final boss of DAC it is Minesky, who had a fantastic group stage and a brilliant upper bracket run. They've already guaranteed themselves a top two finish and fourth position in the DPC points as well. Who do they play? That's what we're trying to find out right now as we head into game number three very shortly. Our panel are back with us once more. Lacoste, Blitz and Cap all ready to look forward to another great game of Dota. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, the the coolest thing about this is that we're now going to see Virtus Pro make some sort of adjustment in their Game 3 draft, just like we've seen from series and from them before. But at the same time, LGD seem very well researched. After all, looking back on that draft, right, they open with the Tusk, they know what VP is going to respond with, yep. and then they in turn think that they have an answer to that, which is going to be the Troll second pick against this Gyro. And then they also had this really good idea of the Tidehunter uh, against all of these Disables, which yep. seemed to work out well enough. Yes. For them. Yes. Yeah, so they broke that one out, Will, as something that they haven't played. It, it's kind of unusual at this late stage in a tournament for a team to, to bring something out so key to the draft and to the way that they want to set up and play this late in the tournament. But it, it shows that they've got good depth there, too. Yeah, it shows that the players are individually skilled. They have a wide hero pool. And that's what you need to compete in these tournaments is uh, having stability will get you far. But to be able to close out a tournament, you need variety. That is the spice of life and LGD. Bring it out at the end. Big fan. It'll force a game number three. And those people will uh, continue wearing their LGD is invincible flags and banners, hoping that that proves to be true heading into game number three. They're not quite invincible because they've lost a game. but They're in the lower bracket yeah, and, and they've in lost the a game bracket, here. So, so not invincible. But, but, but you don't know because at the end of the tournament, if they've won it, then, then they kind of are invincible. Mm. At least for this tournament. Uh, plenty of support, as you would probably imagine, inside the home arena here in Shanghai. It's uh, a bit of a hub for esports, Lacoste. Uh, Jack has been telling us all about it for the last two weeks, about how everything is centered around Shanghai and China. All the Dota teams are here. All the players live here. All the coaches live and eat here. And uh, the fan base is very strong yeah. here as well. And it, and it shows. Yeah, at least when they lose a game, it's, uh, it's a really short trip home, right, for the Chinese teams. <laughs> from Shanghai to Shanghai. is absolutely true. Yeah, no, it is, I except that there's still one team in it. And they don't necessarily have yeah, to well, travel and, and a lot of the teams have actually stuck around this time around. None of the, I don't think there's, um, maybe there's one or two, but I think most of the Chinese teams actually stayed here. Okay. Um, to I mean, I haven't seen Keen. Probably Keen's like here. a little bit of scrimmage. Yeah, still here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, mate, and uh, do you know how we know? We don't have a room to play in, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, we're yeah, small <laughs> side. No, we weren't supposed to reveal that on air, Lacoste. Come I was going to say, you know, that, what, 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 you know, what goes on in the hotel, Lacoste stays in the hotel. <laughs> uh, I should explain to people that are viewing and they think, what the hell are they talking about? Um, obviously, what happens is as the as the tournament progresses, um, practice rooms or team rooms become available to us uh, to to play Dota in, and. Um, They've just not become available this time around. It's, it's been a struggle to find some PCs. Which is a good sign for the teams themselves. Yes. I think they are prioritizing um, the practice and scrims that they get from being here rather than uh, their own personal feelings about the tournament. Great. Uh, game number three, almost upon us then. Uh, draft underway. Uh, three bands already for Virtus Pro, and they've chosen to get rid of the tiny wheel. Yeah, I think that uh, when we talked about it, I said it was a bigger issue than the troll. Yep. And I... Apparently they agree. Remaining. That was quite a nuisance for them. And I think Tiny, as a Five hero, like I talked remaining. about, it's so versatile. It can yep. play in any role. It wins almost any lane. It's very easy to gank for. It's hard to gank against because he's tanky and he can toss you back into another hero. So both of the teams play really good with Jen. None of them want to have it. Oh, I love the approach from VP. All right. the Terrorblade first pick. They're not afraid of uh, the counter picks. I was I, I thought that maybe VP like in this final game three I thought they were gonna go for one of their signature like combos right, right. and it was like okay they'll do some sort of death prophet opening they'll do an right. on the gyro like those two get banned well yeah. what's left the terror blade is probably I mean I just I just wonder whether still. they took the troll and banned the tiny and then they kind of like block pick and ban two key heroes for LGD really like that uh, TV pickup it shows uh, gusto you're just like fearless yes yeah. just like. You could pick the gyro. You could take the troll. We don't care. We think we can beat you. Yeah, we think TV will win this game. Although it lost game one. But I mean, you're in a game three position. 
Still an insane hero. It's also a Ramsey's TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super good. good. Always oh, good Underlord. to watch. Okay. Crimson Guard Underlord, one of the better ways to deal with that hero. Yeah. And even in lane, quite strong against the Terror Blade. Not really threatened at all by this hero. Huh. Yeah, this time around they uh they opt to take the Bane instead of the Lion. Mm. Yeah, because they don't have that uh, strong lane bully and the uh, Terror Blade is strong in the laning stage when he has meta up, but against the Underlord, I guess Bane just wants to bully him out. Unlike the previous game where they had a matchup, uh, Monkey King against the uh, Tidehunter, which was uh, favorable. So they ban out the Doom and... And the troll, troll goes for Virtus Pro. That's interesting. Yeah, so they need another way to deal with... Uh, to deal with the TB. But if they ban away, uh, like, some of the cores focus, then you're still going to get... Uh, Potential strong dual line for this underlord, like the Five the Tusk remaining. or Sand King. Which Bane, even though he is a very strong lane support, may not be able to beat out. You're, you could still feel a very threatened Terra Blade. I still like the Rubik for LGD again. Yeah, Rubik is uh, good against the... Uh, Against the TB with the damage reduction, plus you can always go for that Sunder play in the mid late game. So LGD have been ban banning Viper pretty consistently across. Yeah, especially those second phases as well. Yeah, so LGD need a response. So rather than Gyro or the Radiance Lifestealer, they take away the OD, feeling like it's a better counter to the Terror Blade. Yeah, so they might want to get uh, get a Dragonite as well. They, they're they going to need some tower damage, something that comes online faster so TB can can farm and that's a reliable really? stun as well. I'm thinking of Puck maybe as well against the, against the lineup from LGD. They just need someone to keep them in place. Bane is not, not the best hero in terms of uh, giving the giving the like the lockdown that they need in a fight. I will only accept the Puck pick if they also get Dark Willow. Yeah. Cost. I'm okay with. <laughs> I'm down for that. I will take the Puck if we have that duo. I'm okay with Bounty or Rubik here. Yeah. Unkillable <laughs> duo. Yeah. Pretty disgusting. Oh, duo. they take Tusk though. Tusk Underlord is like one of my favorite combos for that hero, because you just have so much block to get in good Firestorm damage. It feels very difficult to play around. They're gonna be able to rush on really early too with both things. Sigil yeah. plus uh, Firestorm. Ten seconds remaining. And sometimes it's hard for a tower blade to play around because the uh, snowball being remaining. able to grab people when he wants to be able to go for the sunder play. Just checking to see whether LGD played the Timbersaw much. Just the once in the last three months. Yeah. I mean, VP have been running the Tusk like every game. Now maybe. They need reliable stun with the lower cooldown, so again, sanking fits the profile. I'm just not sure how much you... Uh, I, I really don't like uh, when I have to play sanking against Underlord because yeah, he, cause he go goes for pipe. the pipe and you just feel like your damage is negligible. So they take our spirit instead. Which could set them up for a very strong mid lane. Yeah, so now LGD has to reveal one of their two cores. They could d still do stuff like gyro mid. Beautiful pros turn to pink. Yep. But they take Lash. Interesting for LGD. Now you want a BKB carrier on the side of Virtus Pro. Like something that'll carry you into the mid. How does... uh? We saw it once before, right? But it ended up Ten becoming kind of a dual lane. The mid. SF versus Lash Rack. How do you think the oh, uh, that mid matchup... I don't think that's good. Especially with the task pickup on LGD. It's just yeah, you're, 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 you're so vulnerable. LGD did play uh, Lesh just once so far at DAC. It was against Team Liquid. I think it'd be cool with the DK again. You just need something that very naturally transitions into a BKB early on. Same with... I'm okay with Gyro too, for that reason. Mm -hmm. like any of these heroes, I can just go straight up like drums in a BKB or something. But it's Pugna. Oh, Pugna's uh, ward will deal a ton of damage to Lesh. Is this a void game for LGD? Mm, that's not bad. They have picked it earlier in the tournament too. 
it's hard to play some of these heroes against time Ten dilation. I like the Pugna, especially okay. against the Underlord, because uh, it feels Five like you're remaining. very reliant on your Atrophy Aura a lot of times to survive. So that direct magic damage is hard. Virtus Pros turn to hmm. ban. So they think it's a uh, mid Pugna. Yeah, because yeah. they're going to ban offline. I think there's a decent chance that they can just do offline Pugna. Yep, Pasha has played it. Yeah, still would like them to go for something that straight up just gets a BKB though. Ten seconds remaining. Because I think they need more frontline for their team. Five seconds remaining. So, uh, DK would have been the option for me. Is there any offlaners left that would change your mind? What about Darkseer? We didn't see Pasha on Darkseer. Okay, so they banned the Morphling. And Void is still a possibility for LGD. Naga is still a possibility for Virtus Pro. Ten seconds remaining. Just a choice of where that Pugna goes, I guess, now. Yeah. What about a bad and does uh, Pasha plays it? Like they need something that uh, that can Not also much. scale well, mm. but mean, uh, could sure build he into, it, but he hasn't into pipe. Much. Like the the pipe is really good against uh, all the heroes on LGD's side. Oh no. Um, if they had like last pick, they could be a little bit more tricky about things. Yeah, they could. Yeah, I was thinking exactly wow. the same brood. Too easy for VP. <laughs> Whoppa. <laughs> they, they immediately got her off that screen. They're like, <laughs> cut, <laughs> cut. LGD's turn to pick. So it is DK. DK. All right. Yeah. I think they needed a frontliner that could second yep. item BKB. Makes sense. LGD then. Do they take the void here or is it something different? Well, yeah, they can take. Uh, some big Ten ulti cooldown remaining. because they have none besides uh, Static Storm. Five seconds like with remaining. the heroes that they have right now, they can fight pretty much all the time. They need something that'll be okay in the lane against the Pugna that can like shove it back out. I'd be okay with Gyro still. Uh, for LGD. Yeah. They also need their own BKB carriers. They do indeed. The final pick of the lower bracket final. I've seen it a couple times, but I don't know how much you like Luna versus Terrorblade. Obviously, I later, hate it. the reflection is awful for you, but I have seen some Lunas, like the timing. Yeah. You run over the game before. Faceless Void. It is the Void. Okay. There we go then. Teams set, heroes set for the last game. Of the lower bracket, LGD versus Virtus Pro. Uh, gents, time to turn your attentions to prediction time for this third and final game. Lacoste, we'll start with you. Well, uh, I, I kind of favor LGD's lineup this time. They have a void. They play well around it. Uh, I think they they didn't do well in just one game. A couple of missed chronos, but Ame, Ame is pretty badass void. And even if the Virtus Pro keeps uh, putting the pressure... They have a good tower defense with uh, Underlord and uh, what was the fourth? Lash, yeah. So yeah. I think I'll go with LGD this this game. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to go with VP. I'm going to say VP. I think the fact that they've got this Ramsey's Terrorblade, they're good at being able to punish slow timings, and Void does give you that. It was perfect for their last pick, but yep. I still think VP is good against that type. Okay. Decisions have been made as far as the panel is concerned, but the real decisions are made in the Battle of the Arena, which is where we're heading now for Game 3. Hold on to your chairs, ladies and gents. This could be a bumpy ride. Hell yeah, you want to be in this arena. The bumps can be here. The crowd can be here. It's going to be legit. Let's get to the game. I'm I want to get to the game, man. Same. Like, these are the drafts which we, we were kind of debating in a little bit too while the mm. panel was talking. Like, it doesn't feel like either team were able to get exactly what they wanted. There's a lot of compromises from both sides. Yep, indeed. I think you have a DK from Virtus Pro, which could have a very difficult time in a game like this before BKB, especially if he falls behind. Then on LGD, you have Void. We've seen this here with Underlord win a lot of games, but now you're dependent on these long cooldowns, and you've seen how buybacks and baited BKBs just make huge differences in teamfights when these two teams play each other, it might 
come yeah. back to bite them. Ramsey's broke the smoke. They're pinging it out. It's like, he's he's got to be here, boys. He's got, no, no, he's on. He's on. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the right pings up in the trees. That's good game three awareness. You never know what a team's going to do. And it looks like Virtus Pro, like while all that's going up on top lane, they've got an Observer Ward down that's already going to be blocking that bottom lane pull. This Faceless Void, like we were discussing like, okay, what happens if DK falls behind? But what if this Faceless Void falls behind as well? I mean, it's, he doesn't do anything, that's the problem. Yeah, like it's, it's the lack of damage. That was the, my primary mm -hmm. concern looking at this LG lineup. But the Faceless Void can't get Battle Fury. If he can't transition to new mm -hmm. items, like you just gonna have I mean, nothing between uh, I've watched a lot of games at this event and I'd say right now the best player in the world is Ramses Ice 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 or maybe and I don't think it's any coincidence that those are the three players on teams still remaining in this tournament at least for now and I think your key matchup here is Ramses on TB versus the maybe Lesh that, that's that's what it's all gonna come down to they're trying to contest up on this top lane Solar went for the brain set to begin with, not the nightmare. So no uh, bouncing around of aggro. Pull the lanes back in. Who gets the earlier advantage? Lightning versus fire in the mid. It's uh, Terra versus at well, Terra and Terra versus everything else on the top lane. Actually, a very terrifying lane. Terra Blade and the Bane. Mm -hmm. hey, it was a nightmare. <laughs> Hilarious. Bottom, it really hung a force to Sal. He's just spamming the decrep on Void, annoying him. Mid lane, no one already out to a decent lead, but don't expect much aggression in this laning phase. It's a lot of just trading back and forth. Anyone that dies will usually do so for a trade. You see up top, oh. a little bit of harass on the bane. Yeah, Solo already <laughs> starts his TP out. He already used his brain sap, so he knew there was no fight to be had. You're fine with this as Ramses, though. You get a, uh, TP has super high base damage, so. Actually, there's no Quelling Blade, so he'll miss a few. Everything can remain a little bit more passive for now. Mid lane is... It's fairly even, considering the creeps that are still left in the mid. Top lane, Nightmare is out. Ramses is in that Metamorphous state. They do not find the target they really want to go on, and with that extra bonus damage of Brain Set from Bane, no kills. Xnova's finally going to get rid of that Observer Ward that was on the bottom lane. So, pull will be opened at two minutes. Ame um, getting a farm off the, on the hard camp as well. Also keeps it unblocked, so they'll have another pull if they want to drag the easy camp. And then Link. Haystrun picked up on maybe top. Can't really do much with it, though. There's a DK here with almost a soul ring. Two points in dragon. Rolling Boulder down on the bottom. Ah, oh, shit. No, that doesn't come to anything. You're right. I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, it's like, hey, man, we just had a bloodbath game in game mm -hmm. two. Where's the kills coming in game three? And they won't. They won't until someone, someone screws up. Yeah. Because I think VP has the easier time rotating, just because the Earth Spirit's so mobile. They have a Dragonite to play around as soon as he hits six, but the Leshrac is the key, because his teleport, especially with this max lightning build everybody's going, if you if you have, like let's say, a Pugnant and an Earth Spirit under this bottom tower, they're both dead to a Lesh TP. Do you actually like him going the two points up in Split Earth as well? Yeah, definitely. You, you want at least the two points in stun. That sp ability scales so well. Feels like almost an insult to the little tracks that used to be. With the nice points up in Edict. But, uh, yeah, this is all about lane presence. Yeah, it's also really difficult to utilize that against a hero like DK because it's physical damage. So it's mostly for pressuring towers, and that's just not something you can do usually until later levels, like at least level eight, nine. Roger spends so much time on this uh, on this bottom lane. Yep. Normally this is this is a hero, even a player you expect to keep rotating, but. He just doesn't want to stop mm -hmm. holding the hand of Pasha. Yep. Like, how long until that mid lane gank does come in? Not for a while. They need no one to be level 6 before they can actually make a move anywhere. His only real play would be to teleport top on a dive, but I haven't seen FYU snowball yet, and I don't expect them to be diving tower anytime soon. Especially when they know that Roger's always playing with a TP. It's much better. You just chill bottom. Pasha's spamming decrep on Ame's Void, just making him annoyed. They're going again. Ame doesn't have time walk for one second, and that timing, it's going to be enough with the one charges. Yep. A bounce away, but they have been prepping for that potential kill for a while. You just look at the CS. While they are tied, uh, the off lane, bottom lane for VP has eight more denies. 
As she lock in Solo, Solo has the brain sap to give him a little bit extra life back, but it won't be enough to survive, not with the extra snowball available for FY. And that yep. is first blood to LGD, maybe a revenge from Roger, a double kick connected in, next Nova, he's on one HP, but the Orb of Venom sends him to his grave, Roger will die on the other side of the tree line, so it will give the kill to Somnus. But both of these kills all come at the cost of creeps and lanes dying with no one around for XP. Up top, they do get the first blood, but they lost the full creep wave onto the tower. Rams is having an excellent game, as is maybe. It's all going to be about these early rotations. Who takes the first towers? When is the first chronosphere used? Well, timing for the first chrono was only a level and a half away, so. Yeah. This is one of those relaxing game threes and neither team is playing passively necessarily it's just that you don't really have the ability to make things happen on the map until later levels so you just chill i think vp's laning decisions this game were on point they did their jobs now earth spirit's free to rotate a bit he's gonna probably head towards mid no one soon to be level six so get it off this creep wave and that's when you look to make plays they place the early ward as well and they'll get fys now because of that always critical to place your mid ward first that means that uh, vision advantage for the second wave, because yeah. both of the observed wards were planted to watch the southern side of the river. So the ping's coming out. Roger knows he can be visible if he gets... Actually, he's visible to the observed ward anyway. Mm -hmm. It reaches up to the tree line. Mm -hmm. So his rotation has been scouted out. That's why FY is already here in the mid. Yeah, we talked about this game being a game of seconds. Those wards have a timer two seconds apart. Roger and FY can battle for the top rune. It won't be there. It'll be an invis on bottom, but with Somnus and FY looking to combo against Roger, he just kicks and rolls. Nice escape. Ramsey, it's just, it's, one of the, it's a really cool game, Toby. I like this. It's nice and relaxing. Crowd wants to be into it, but nothing really to do except watch. <laughs> but expect a bloodbath real soon, because. Oh, Dragon form is up. No one can attack. Start to pressure, but. Yeah, you're right. We, we're out, we are waiting for all these big combinations of abilities and rolling boulder. In they go. Snowball, perfect protection time from FY, meaning that no one just doesn't do enough damage. Somnus hiding underneath the tier one tower. Still has enough with the pulse to kill off Roger. Giving him a double kill. X Nova looked to help out, but really the hard work was done by FY. Yep. That's the timing. It's all about the level six on Lesh. You start pumping out 100 damage per second for 20 mana. It's real good. Mid, that also buys time for X Nova. He realizes they probably have they vision of this top. area too. They get both wards. Callus, they're going to mirror him up to start with. And Nightmare is buying time because Roger's coming in. The rolling ball to forward. He'll need the extra kick. Pushing Chalice back in, but with Somnus arriving. And the split Earth. Terrorblade will fall. Roger as well. Somnus has just doubled his kill count. Four kills in the space of one minute. He's looking for a fifth one. Slow down Solo. He's got Brain Sap in one second time and six one charges. He saps up a little bit and he'll give the kill to Chalice. Yep. Seven to one for LGD. They're turning up the heat. You can see right there the Lesh TP, Toby. All of a sudden, you got to turn tail and run. There is nothing you can do to that hero if he comes in and you don't have spells to immediately turn targets to the Lesh track and take him out. That is the damage dealer for LGD. That's the reason why we might not be huge fans of the Void. He doesn't need to do damage. And that's where we saw LGD's draft succeed in the past, where you have these two cores that can yep. utilize Chronosphere and pump out the DPS. It was so reliant on that working, so LGD. We count the lucky stars that everything starts coming up less rack. Not to mention the fact they give a little bit more space to Chalice, so he's going to become a lot tankier too earlier on. And he'll bring the sustain for the LGD fight. It's not just the Chronosphere. The Chronosphere is meant to be for the aggression. Roger's hoping FY will walk up the hill. Double damage rune. Actually, can he actually do anything with this? Shards, rolling boulder. He doesn't get away. Somnus, chalk up another one. Five out of the eight kills of LGD. They've gone into that lash. Oh, they get the glimpse. I'll pull him in. No one. Forced to fight, does hit three heroes with the breathe five, but so is a split earth. They have the damage and the sharp block. They push no one down. The snowball is chasing him. They want the Dragon Knight, and they got him. It's, 
This is the strength of Leshrac. The moment there's a Bane Earth Spirit on the other team, this hero becomes so powerful. One of the best heroes to lane up, or just play in Dota against these two heroes. And it's really only the Pugna they have to deal with the Leshrac, and that's purely when the Nether Ward becomes relevant. And he hasn't even skilled that yet and won't for a little bit of time. So maybe is king of this game for at least the next 10 minutes. And like Earth Spirit rolls in, but he just dies too. You can't actually stay near this hero, and he's one of the few that can always pressure DK no matter how many points he puts up in Dragon Blood. So Virtus Pro have to try and stop the bleed. They have to slow this down a little bit more, but their lineup, like, is, aren't they meant to be aggressors? You've got a Pugna. Hey. He wants to Nether Blast a tower. You've got a Dragon Knight. He wants to pop Dragon Fall and push a tower down as well. Thing is, look at the tower pressure from LGD. They, they haven't tickled anything. Nope. It's not. It's 9 to 1, 10 minutes. It's a 1,000 gold league and barely that's, that. That's and not the way their lineup works, right? Like, the only one who's ever going to really threaten a tower is Lashrak with Edict. Yeah, exactly. So they they need to continue the aggression and get kills with Chrono. But, like, it's all about objectives. We've seen this time and time again. Towers in Roche. And Ramses is still farmed. He's 200 gold behind, maybe, even doing though the drain. there's five kills advantage. Rolling Boulder and Kick will connect on FY with the Brain Sap. FY's got a couple of one charges. The Nightmare buying time. Still got four of those charges and the bottle. It won't help him survive, however, but Somnus here for the rebuttal. Solo. Kill goes to Arme. Up top, Ramses using meta. Forces the Underlords teleport away. He'll just Dark Rift right back to top. He's bringing friends, too. He's bringing FY. He does have Sunder on TB. Now taking position in the top net worth. It's the thing about Leshrac, you gotta keep up the aggression. Well, Chrono's off cooldown in 13 seconds time, so Faceless Void can at least turn and work with this, or is Somnus just gonna run top lane? He just popped off the shrine, he's getting closer and closer towards this Yule Scepter. And yeah, they're, they're pinging the tier one tower top. They want this gone. But no one's got Dragon Form, they've got Catapult Ways pushing in mid. Pasha added pressure on the bottom. Now they're gonna smoke. VP wants to look to smoke bottom, mirror this movement. They might even go top actually and try to contest this, but they know there's a void bottom. They can only really kill him with a Dragon Knight stun, but even then, when these supports aren't six, Bane and Earth Spirit are very underwhelming. Roger's still a full level away, even after just popping the tome. That's the big issue for VP right now, is their supports just aren't in the game. Whereas up top, Disruptor level 6. You have a Tuscar behind the tower. He's almost level I, 6. I don't know how they win this fight, though. Like, all Amai has to do is hit a couple of heroes with Chrono, and Lashrak will TP in, yep. and this fight will turn the opposite direction. They're just forcing it. This is a weird position for VP. They don't really have the tools to do anything other than this. They can't contest Lashrak in this game until 20 minutes. Disruptor TP to the Tier 2 tower. Making sure that tier one is free to TP onto and Virtus Pro, they're not seeing enough. They don't have enough information. They have no other choice but to abandon this. Yeah. And depending on how you feel about Ramses as a player, should uh, tell me whether who you favor in the game because it's going to be on his shoulders to win this game for his team. But a big terror blade. Like I, I, I favor the hero even before Ramses put his name on it. The Dragon I just needs space. Yep. He needs space to catch up. Right now, all three cores of LGD have more net worth than him. Not by much. It's uh, only a 300 difference between him and the Underlord. But it's still a 300 difference between him and the three position. Mid lane, the root goes on solo. Nightmare dodges some nice abilities. Actually dodged the lightning. And then took it off at the right time to dodge the split earth. Yeah, the silence from Roger right there out of invis to silence the glimpse and prevent that. Save solo. Places a nice ward as well, but can you really fight this if you're VP? Here comes no one. You but. just got Dragonlance and Metamorphosis came off cooldown, so Ramses may come into this fight. He walked underneath the Radiant Observe wards. They know he's there. A double kick from Roger. Brain tap harassment. No one triggering off his Dragon Tail. The stun control's not enough, and LGD, they're still not forced into a bad position. Mm -hmm. Ame, TP's coming off cooldown in three seconds. Time he's going to keep farming. If VP want to force this and push it under the tower, LGD will oblige. Until then, they're accepting the status quo. Maybe they'll change their mind as Somnus' as Yule Scepter is flying in on the courier. And then they can have initiation. Yules into that stun, or you can just shard into the stun. That'll work too. Follow up pit, and all of Virtus Pro are too far away. No one that commit the storm. And that's 30 seconds without the DK, which basically means that tier one tower is toast. I would have liked to see them save the static storm, but. It's fine, you commit, guarantee the kill. They have this nice wolf creep, which is significantly increasing their pushing speed. Excellent creep to have, just 30% more damage for your whole team. Bottom lane, Ame continuing to farm. He's about to finish that Mask of Madness. 
Pogna finishing the Aether Lens, so VP is at the point where everyone is able to just, you know, spam their abilities, stay on map, but outside of Ramses, no one's really ahead of their counterpart, and it really goes back to these supports. Bane still not six. Roger just now hitting six. Solo smoking up to the top area of the map. He's trying to hunt this Lesh Rack. But look at Somnus' position. Like, so Somnus will show himself in the lane. Solo's, Yule, Solo's still walking. Yeah, with the Yule Scepter, it doesn't even matter if ES connects on the silence. And they can turn it around and be more aggressive. You can see this is not a rolling ball for VP. They need a kick, won't come, and Chalice will take FY. He won't get the disruptor. Yep. But it won't matter. They dark rift to the bottom lane, adding pressure to the opposite yep. side of the map. It's perfect. It's really standard stuff. They push out this top lane, that one extra way away from maybe. Then he TP's mid, shoves that lane. In the meantime, Underlord's bottom now, still with the wolf creep, and you group up with the void. You're probably going to lose this tier one tower top to Ramses, but you ditch the disruptor here, and he's able to then catch if VP make the decision to defend bottom. Really good splitting up of the map, and it puts VP in a position where they have to make a choice, and none of them are really favorable or guaranteed to succeed. And yeah, you just keep going for tier two here if you're LGD. Make VP make a move. They yep. have this word up top if the Terra Blade shows. Force them into the Chronosphere. Force them into yeah. a fight they just don't want to take. Ooh. And it's not happening. It looks like Virtus Pro will continue to back off at the moment. They're farming up inside their jungles. The Terra Blade is not wanting to fight. He just finished up his Yasha. No one has drums, so he's gone as early combat build as he possibly can. I expect no of uh, Ramses not to finish this Sanjanyasha. I think he just goes straight for a BKB. You want to blink in this game as well at some point. Maybe you pike instead, so you can try and play away from the pit and the chrono. It's a really difficult TB game, though. They have a lot of lockdown for him. Many abilities that just completely render him useless to use his Sunder. Watch that quick by closely. For now, he's holding the S and Y. You got a four staff arriving from Pasha, so they got better ways to get out of the shards. But LGD, yep. they look towards Roshan thanks to that double damage room, which thanks. is still on the faceless void. They have that bonus damage to rip into Roshan. Thanks to the Underlord as well. Mm -hmm. It's the strength of Radiant. It's been picked a lot at this tournament, prioritized over Dire by nearly every team. BP are TPing in, but it's, it's coming way too late. Thanks to that DD rune, LGD will be done before Roger can arrive, unless he's going to rolling boulder, like right now, which, position-wise, he couldn't get there in time. They give it to Ame, though. I am not sure I agree with that decision. I would much rather see them put that on maybe. Uh, he is the bigger one. He's a big kill streak to also save. 5 0 5 on that Latrax. They yep. use the Edict. They'll burn down the tower. Ramses is finally coming home. Come on. Now they'll, they'll be forced into a fight sometime. VP cannot continue to lose all these out of towns for no, re no rebuttal. Nether Ward still not skilled on Pasha's Pugna as well. The Leshrac really doesn't feel the pressure. Pugna, an excellent matchup against the Leshrac, but again, it's only into the later stages of the game. And it's, it's one damage per point of mana used. There's nothing that's going to stop maybe from spamming lightning stun in these fights other than that ward. Oh, VP, they're smoking up, they're rotating around, so you'll have Ramsey's TP onto the tower. Already the Dark Rift is starting off here from Chalice. They feel it coming, they know it's coming. Solo can Nightmare, but it won't cancel anything. Roger could not arrive in time to get a kick away. Yeah. So LGD, they add the pressure, they force yeah. the rotation to Virtus Pro, and it feels <laughs> like VP are just being denied pleasure. Yep. It's all this Underlord. It gives them the Roche, gives them that extra wave top. They all get out safely. They bait the smoke. In the meantime, what's Ami been doing? Just farming bottom, shoving this lane to his heart's content. Maybe cuts the wave. They're going to be at this tier two before Ramses is even at this tier one top with his wave. Excellent map movement. And this is what this lineup can give you, where they're strong in multiple places. And you fear both the Disruptor, uh, the disruptor offensive catch and the Underlord that can just Uber you to safety anytime, much like a taxi at 2 a.m. Bottom tier two tower is gone. They have this great Nothing ward. Nothing to save it. Great ward above their shrine as well. Radiant. So they see, they see Here Roger. They, they see everyone. They can just go. Yep. They're coming up. Catapult behind him. The blast will be there. Oh. Army commits the Chronosphere. He's going up to Pasha. That's a big committal just for this Pugna. Look for the buyback. The kick from Roger. Pasha creates space. He's going for the drain. Thanks to the silence and Army. He can at least time dilate. But LGD, we know what happens when fights go bad for them. They did minimal damage to the tier three tower. They're all bailing out. They do not hey. want to give Virtus Pro anything. I like it though, Toby. 
You save your tier one top, you apply tons of pressure, you force TPs, and yeah, you don't get the kill, but FY. they made a move. Gonna find Solo. Fiend's Grip is available, but they just want to get the hell out of here. They don't have enough friends nearby. And Army. Okay, that's aggressive posturing if you ever see it. Time walk up into Fog of War. Vision still isn't that great for LGD. Like, their wards are very defensive in nature. They're not watching VP moving their defense line. At the big item time for Ramses, he does have that BKB in quick buy. He's 600 gold away. As soon as he finishes that, it'll be very difficult Snowball. for them to take him down without Chrono. Coming towards Pasha, Solo. Ah, oh, four no. stock doesn't actually get Pasha down. The Yule Scepter onto Solo. So it's Somnus who isolates the hero, combining with Edict and Pulse Nova. He's pretty low on mana, but it won't matter when the Bloodstone Charger starts Ooh. to accrue. Pasha has to run back to the tier 2 tower. He doesn't have four stuff. The shards off target as Pasha goes a little bit more of a long way around, but it won't matter. Rolling Boulder, triple TPs are coming in. Curtis Pro, they want this fight. They need this fight, but they don't have Dragon Form. They don't have that big stun. The glimpse is here. The kick will connect onto Somnus, but no one without the ES. He doesn't feel confident. They're trying to back up, but it's Pasha under the tier 2 tower. Still on the run. He's survived through so much already this fight. It's surprising he's able to do so, but they turn. They fight. Solo, Fiend's Grip, needs some distance, has to lock the Underlord in position, allow Ramsey's time to beat into him. Somnus wants to help out. The Storm will do a little bit, but they've already lost two. Disrupted down plus Underlord. Somnus, so low on life. Solo, he's got six seconds time before he can kill him, but FY creates the space by rolling bouldering in. He'll offer himself off as a sacrifice, so Somnus doesn't get brain stabbed, can get the distance. And LGD, Man, these Toby, kills mean so much when they were so far in front. They just had to chill a bit, Toby. They had Chronosphere coming up about 20 seconds big. before that fight started. Mid. They jump in, get the Split Earth, Yule Septus from Somnus prepped it all. Uh, they blow the meta. They still have Aegis for 30 seconds. I don't know if they'll get a chance to use it. But look at Terrorblade, man. This is what scares me about Ramses. He finishes the BKB, and all of a sudden, with no Chronosphere, you cannot kill him before he sunders. Only, yeah. only problem is it's, it's sustained. It's even brought clarities out. These fights are going on for so long. But they're burning so much mana just to keep going. It's the same with Noah, and he's going to go for a BKB as well. And it's the same story as these previous games. All about the BKBs, playing around them, baiting them out, and VP looking to take decisive advantages in big fights with the spell immunity. Going to work one to form into the physical damage of army. He starts yeah. to get a little bit higher, so the Aegis. It times out on the Faceless Void. He's almost completed up the BKB. Then... We kind of have to see him hit a little bit harder. Going for the non-Battle Fury build, like, how do you progress this? You don't really. It's a lot on maybe. This is the this is the, the Ramses show, as we said. Once he gets to a certain point, he'll be able to just shred through people, and it's just maybe that can really deal with him. The, the big advantage right now for LGD, though, is that FY, he has that gold per minute talent. He already has a Blink Dagger, whereas Roger, still 1,200 gold away from his. So the counter initiation of the Tusk, as we've seen many times in this tournament, is very, very strong, and there's no real counterplay from VP. In order to commit to a fight, Roger has to put himself in a poor position, and against heroes like Leshrac Underlord, you might just die. Yep. Be the sacrifice. He kind of kept, kept himself out of the poor position by being glimpsed away <laughs> in the last fight. Then he made the best of the opportunity, farmed up the mid lane, gained a couple more levels, so at least the Earth Press now eight and three quarters. Love this dual ward though. Look at the top hill in the dire jungle. Great vision for LGD, and then another one in the mid oh. lane that saw that smoke. They yeah. saw that smoke, they just stand in a chunk for it on high ground now. They're getting rid of the Observer Ward yeah. on the hillside. Mm. I don't know if that was then a little bit too much information. Because it's, it's made Virtus Pro very, very scared. Seeing the Faceless Void being there, like yeah. if, if it was just a support, it would have been fine. Yep. And that's the thing. I love VP. It's all about the little losses. So yeah, they waste a smoke there, but they know, okay, they saw this coming, just farm. And they immediately break smoke and start doing just that because they understand we cannot run up a high ground <laughs> into these choke points. Pasha's taking the mid tower. Yep. He's in through the rear with a double blast. He'll, uh, he'll take that mid tier one. Almost clinksing yep. this. SMY is now fully done for the Terror Blade. So Ramsey's. They're not looking to finish the Hurricane yep. Pike. He just wanted to have that, that SMY completed. You can see the Underlord taking a page out of VP's book from game one. He can't eat the Ice Ogre, but he took one over, and he's placing it on all of his teammates. Makes you a lot less susceptible to this Terror Blade's right clicks. Rams is finishing the SNY. LGD. They're up on the high ground. Yep. They actually burned their fortification to try and get in closer then. 
the thing missing from VP's lineup right now is that instant initiation. There's no blink on Earth Spirit, no blink on DK, because he opted to go for the drums BKB. They have no real method of creating a fight. They've got to play around LGD and maybe... Uh, honestly, they don't have a way to start a fight other than Earth Spirit rolling in, and that's only going to effectively pick off players. You may think about it. They realize the Shrike went yep. to the bottom lane, so he's not really involved. The Fiend's grip on the side, Faceless Void, Snowball will pick him up and protect him, but the time dilation and Chronosphere from Ame is wonderful. But the damage output's not enough. The shards get him away from Ramses, who has Thunder Revival. He just has to wait out the storm, and the pullout from Underlord, it will not come in time. Somnus, they can just swap his life. Done exactly that defensive yield scepter won't help even with the current in the middle of this fight, Ramses. Nightmare, they can just start chaining kills. Now, FY running down the river, but who's there waiting? It's Roger. He knows he's being snowballed. They want more kills. They want FY as well as Nova. Nova will be brought down by no one. FY by Roger in the combination with Pasha. LGD. Toby. The bleed is beginning again. Toby, they just have to stall. Just stall. The grip is down. A great snowball. Just relax. Don't Chronosphere. Just kite away. You don't have maybe. How many times have we said he's the damage output? As soon as he shows bottom, VP, they're not going to go to sleep. They're going to run straight at you, and that's yep. exactly what they do. We're saying they can't start a fight without committing too hard, but when there's no Leshrac, Roger isn't threatened by anything because he's not a target LGD can realistically utilize spells on Roger, to still win a fight. He's baiting this fight. He wants Ame to, to chase him into the shrine area because that's when Ramsey's TP's over. Ame has the BKB, but without Chronosphere, Roger blind kick is the only way he cancels that TP. Huge will not happen. shift. LGD still in a good position in the game, but after a, a fight like that, it's hard to maintain your composure, especially game three, home crowd. Yeah. The mood in here is so tense. Can't hear a whisper from the crowd every time LGD takes just a slight disadvantage. It's the ultimate disbelief. LGD, they they had the power, maybe had such a huge advantage. The only person that was keeping up with them was the Terrorblade. And it's still the same thing, like Terrorblade as well as the Shrek. They're not that different in net worth. The danger part for LGD is the fact that Pugna and DK yep. are becoming real heroes. Yep. No one has the full 10-second BKB completed. He's already looking at a Blink Dagger. The Pugna, his drain position, he's sinking so beautifully with Sol. These guys are just like the, the two-man hit squad. Just lock in one hero on a side and blast him out. The other thing is the Aeon Disc on Pugna, the Blink on DK. Once there's an Aeon Disc Pugna, he's no longer a realistic target, and the DK with a Blink allows them to actually start fights in the proper order and formation because you want no one going in first, stunning the Void, tanking the Chrono. Here comes this fight for the Aegis. I don't know if VP can take this, and once again, this is the strength of the Underlord where you're just getting all of these Roaches effectively for free because you just do it too, too quickly and you don't take any damage. Solo's coming over. The Observe Ward's down. Roshan at 1300. They're not there in time. Virtus Pro, but maybe they still take the fight. Remember that Chrono Sphere from Ame, ready to go. He'll take the cheese this time. Somnus has the Aegis Immortal. It's FY. The blink forward solo. He's being pulled in. He nightmares. Got glimpse back away. And the double kick. It's nice. In fact, it's doing so much work. The Somnus is so low. Ame, he has it defensively, yep. Chrono. And stop Ramsey from hitting in. But they know Ramsey's. Yep. They can't control him. No one. That one attack may just be enough. Somnus with the tick. He'll Yule step oh. her up. And he'll go hit the deck. And Ramsey's one attack. There there goes the Aegis Immortal. Roger in through the rear. He looks for the control. A double kick. He got both FY as well as Faceless Void. And Somnus is stranded by himself around four heroes. It's like he has no other teammates. And even then, Disruptor came in to help. That won't work. Fight back from Tuscar was also ineffective. Virtus Pro back to back. Advantage no. fights. It's same issue, different methods. Maybe ooms himself to the Pugna Ward. You have no mana regen when that is active. All of a sudden, he's at 400 health, no mana. They Chrono the Terror Blade, but wait, there's no damage because they haven't killed maybe yet. They deliberately live, leave him alive. They don't blow any more spells on him, and all of a sudden, he's dead, but mm -hmm. over there. And now, he pops his BKB, but there's a, there's a Terror Blade with meta just crushing him, and there's no armor picked up on the Leshrac, and after he dies, he even loses the Ice Ogre buff that had been so kindly placed on him by his Underlord earlier. LGD. Brutal, man. You you can't... You gotta play perfect if you want to beat VP. They've lost both of their advantages now. The experiences were gone before. This graph hasn't updated, but it is just under 1k advantage for the net worth going the way of uh, VP. Let's have a quick look at the replay, replay, replay. Roger, this is live. <laughs>
I mean, hopefully we don't see a real replay of that same Here we go, replay time. time, so... Yeah, so you see, uh, the issue is maybe use so much mana in the but pit. this glimpse moment too, like they pulled him away yeah. from the snowball attack. Look, I have said so many times, I love Leshrac, you never skill your ultimate past level one. This is part of the issue, because it's only the 30 more damage, and in the pit, he's using nearly all of his mana pool. He starts that fight on 400 mana, then he uses a lightning stun, there's a Pugna Ward, all of a sudden he's oom completely, and now even though his team is five, they don't have their key here, they run away from the choke point they had been originally fighting on, and now there's a Terra Blade on the high ground crushing them. And and that, uh, that's why you keep your, your ultimate level one. It's 20 damage a second instead of 40. Adds up quick. Yeah, you can see that expression. It's true. It rings. It's LGD. What the hell have we done? How the hell do we undo it? The gold advantage is actually flatlining over the zero mark. It's uh, nothing in it. 14 to 11. The towers are perfectly even. Yeah. It's all about now, how can LGD repair the team fights? They've still got Chronosphere. They've got Maelstrom on the Faceless Void. The Lashrak Bloodstone charges have severely dropped. But how do they get this initiation off? Blink Dag is available. Underlord, he's been really strong as well. This he's is not alone. really the way they want to have it work. Lashrak, seven Bloodstone charges, now four and dead. He doesn't have buyback. That's 45 seconds without buyback. The VP can go high ground. They may oh think they're just going to be forcing a buyback, but they're actually going to be taking a mid rax They have Scotty on Terrorblade, Toby. He, he actually just doesn't die anymore. The Leshrac damage output has disappeared. The Underlord has a pipe and an HOD. He's not going to do anything, so they might be able to slow this oh, down. No one jumps in. He gets it on the hero he doesn't want. He got Chalice. They're going to at least take a tier three here once the, this creep wave comes up. Ame still showing top. The backdoor regeneration is uh, currently stopping any kind of real push. But uh, maybe the pressure from Ame on top. There's one TP coming back. It's going to be the form of the Bane. In fact, everyone from Virtus Pro is coming back. But Ame begins his TP in the Fog of War. Solo will not catch him. And they, they avoid a disaster. They actually avoid losing their tier three tower, at least in mid, so the shrines aren't exposed. I think VP recognize they're in a pretty dominant position in this game. They don't need to force anything too hard. That tier three doesn't change the game too much when Roche is an objective so far away. Aegis was, went down there on maybe earlier, so four minutes until the first respawn. Seven until guaranteed. They smoked up. I'm not certain that was in range of the Dire Observer Ward. They checked the yeah. hillside with a gem previously to look for it, but judging by VP's movements, the fact that everyone is currently going home, yeah, they they saw it, or at least they feel it. ET sent a message. Go home. Underlord now has a Lotus Orb completed. So this will make it more problematic for Ramses in the fight just to get that perfect Sunder. Or is it even for that? But this is the issue. They have so many methods of save. They can sleep the Terra Blade. They can Pugna heal the Terra Blade. They can decrep him. The only way to 100 to 0 him is if his teammates are dead. But how are you going to do that when there's a 3,000 HP top yeah. net worth Terra Blade if shredding even, you the if, whole time? Even a three to four man Chrono one sa won't save you if there's a Nether Ward in the back line because there's only one person that does enough damage, and that's the Lashrak. And she needs to be standing on top of the fight. The Shiva's Gun will allow Lashrak a little bit more life to survive. I just feel like I look at VP, they seem to have all the tools. Every hero with a critical role to executing a team fight, but they can cover one another's weaknesses. Yeah. It's so difficult. I, VP, you, you know they have a formula to winning the next fight, and it's just about executing it. You look at LGD, I feel like they might need to capitalize either on VP, VP's mistakes, some spacing, some sort of favorable skirmish, before, but, the, but they're just running around as five with the, maybe Ramsey split pushing. Yeah, the, yeah, that's the only person who's been like separated from the pack is Ramsey's because he's being so efficient across the map. He's able to find so much more money, so much more levels. Like he's cracked level 20 now, having the 10 second reflection cooldown. Let's just make more copies. Like LGD were fighting enough heroes on the map. You can see Pasha's itemization, Aether Lens, Force, going for Ags next. He doesn't need to do anything but keep his teammates alive. No one will provide the initiation. Eventually, Solo's gonna get a big grip, but in truth, they really have to do nothing. Like, all they need to do is run a circle around Ramses. He's gonna finish the Hurricane Pike. I really like that decision from him. Just need a little bit more maneuverability. So, Roshan potentially up in just over a minute. This is, uh, there's only one remnant that's left behind of Roshan's powers, and that's the cheese which is in the Latrac. So he's got a little bit more sustain. 
plus the four Bloodstone charges is not what you want on Lashrac. So even for that net worth, which we're showing up on the screen right now for Somnus, a lot of it's not as effective net worth. I get the hell out of there. TP back to the shrine. But Ame is getting more space on bottom. He can put that Mjolnir shield onto the track. So if VP do want to find him, make him, make him sparkle. But again, Ame has been attacked so much where he just puts it on himself. Gonna go in for a Monkey King bar after it. Feeling that Ramses is, is encroaching on the butterfly. But the one bright spot is that there's no pipe or even a hood picked up on any member of Virtus Pro. Leshrac, level 20 talent, plus 50 Pulse Nova damage. He's maxed out that spell. He'll do 230 damage in an AoE around himself. So if they can hit this big Chrono or two-man shards, Disruptor Connect, you know, some method of getting multiple heroes together, Lesh can start tearing them up, but he still has the BKBs to contend with. And, and they're still very high duration. Nine seconds on TBs. Talos has to get the hell out of here. He can't TP out in this. The only thing he can do is that Dark Rift. A TP would have been way too easy to cancel. Even Lotus Orb to ensure there was no other shenanigans. But here comes Virtus Pro for the final remaining out of tower with that tier two tower on top. Can't even believe it survived 35 minutes in this game. The upside for VP, or sorry, LGD, is that eventually Ramses runs out of more items to buy. Yeah, so, he caps. Yeah, he'll have a butterfly and they'll have more and more items. LGD still has a lot of survivability innately, oh, the I'm, Void specifically. I'm not even certain that's going to be an upside because Pugnan's building an Aghanim Scepter, so they, technically you're going to have multiple Ramses because he's going to have that Medic on the back line, which so far LGD have shown they cannot reach. Even with the Blink Dagger from FY, with his positioning, he almost has to stay alive because he's the mech carrier. Yep. He's, that, he's that flash regeneration that LGD need at the critical time. So he's, also the save. Their, he's, yeah, he's also their save. He's also their initiator. No pressure, FY. No pressure at all. They're still, you know, they're doing okay. LGD going up a little bit in network. Roshan's a really quick spawn. Yep. If Solo stays in there just half a second longer, he would have actually seen that Roshan's up. Here comes the Sigil looking for it. So LGD aware. VP aware, Roshan is alive. LGD must contest this. This be the tell of the series. Second Roche, deciding team fights. And this one's going to be the third one. This is now Refresher Shot available. Thomas, so they're at big. least nudging out the mid. But Virtus Pro understand they don't need to force this. Like, everything they have to commit to kill off Roshan mm. is what they need for the fight. I love the little things from Ramses. He can't finish the butterfly, so he buys the Crystallis, and now he'll also have buyback. So even if they manage to take him down pre-meta in some big chrono, he'll always be able to come back into the fight, TP in, fight for the Roche. And this Refresher Shard is game-winning for both teams. Oh, Ramses does a little bit of damage, but as we've seen VP many times, they'll put one hero inside the pit, but it's just more that encouragement for LGD to try and contest them. Thanks to the Shard cooldown time, Every 12 seconds, Tuscar is watching that pit very closely, but they want to watch mid even closer. The root is onto no one's DK, the Chronosphere. Ame is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rams in the back line. He has the Chrono win, but he's all by himself. Maybe it'll work out, but they only pick up the Bane. Silences, here comes Roger, a perfect magnetize with the double stun. Charles, he needs to get everyone out with the Dark Rift. Nova, he can't survive long enough. But how far did you go, Somnus? His BKB has been burnt. Metamorphs this year is being committed. So is the DK form and his BKB. But can LGD get back into this fight? Tusker buys back. The Sigil is dissuading Virtus Pro from going in deeper. What? Somnus! He goes straight in. At least it's a four man room from Charles to create space, but it doesn't get the big one. The Aghanim's Pasha drains the life out of Somnus. He'll buy back the Bloodstone charges. Man, if he can go negative, maybe Somnus will reach it in this game. Man. Maybe has made some critical mistakes. They're coming back in. There's still no Chronosphere for another minute. The Nightmare Decrepified Chalice has to commit the Pit of Malice. The Shards won't lock him in solo. Caught out a little bit by Somnus, but he's so fearful of going in. So they let FY and X Nova do the work. So they can try and kill off Solo, but Pasha, the medic is there giving his life. Roger, he's in the right position. Rolling boulders over the Roshan. They understand the timing of this. The kick through it. Ame stunned up. Ramsey's walks inside the pit. The pit is actually there from Chalice, but the storm is even better. Maybe now, Virtus Pro don't have the strength to fight. Chalice, he's strong. Roshan so low, 180 life. Radiant will kill him, but no one snatches the Aegis to the Immortal. He'll survive to fight. 
another day. Can't say the same about the rest of the LGD players. Only two of them alive. Sonus has already bailed. He's pushing top lane. He doesn't want to have anything to do with this. FY does manage to get the refresher shard and the cheese. Salvages just a little bit of that fight, but you can see VP hitting a timing, and they are so scary. Somnus is going for the trade-off. Fortification comes from Virtus Pro. It's the ES. Somnus is still okay with this. He'll go for the split. He'll go for the pulse. Roger can't kick him away in time. Now the DK will come. So the tier three tower has fallen. Pasha, BKB Somnus, TP out. He'll be successful. The mid lane has still not fallen. LGD, their tier three tower is alive. Ranges Metamorphosis has worn off. They haven't found the opening. The space, it was created by Somnus, who will now defend the mid lane. They get the tier three. Uh, it's so tense, Toby. The, the Rax is actually under attack. The Creep Wave is killing off the, the range. They have to TP back the Terra Blade. LTD, like, they yeah. should have had so much more damage done to them if it wasn't for Somnus realizing, I, we done fucked up, let's go top. And the buyback on maybe was crucial, but at the same time, he farms so fast that he'll be at a six slot item real soon. And yeah, they didn't get Aegis, but VP has it on no one. And more importantly, FY got the Refresher Shard. FY has given his Void a refresher. That was the critical component of that Roche fight. That's what you needed to take. And yeah, he dies in the pit. They lose more heroes than VP, but two Chronospheres? Yeah. You know, I, I said before, the pressure was on FY to carry this. Even if they can't win the team fight, he's giving them the utility to win it. But the damage output is really starting to rack up. They need that never-ending control. Ramses now has a Daedalus available. A five-man smoke up. VP are coming for a kill. This will be a nice little thing for so for someone else to pick up, maybe with that arcane rune. But you know, VP, they're sniffing blood in the water. It's all just gonna be about spacing. LGD's turn. They're gonna smoke up. Solo comes in. The smoke will break. They see him. Army burns the BKB. They just want to kill off the bay nice and quickly. Pasha. He goes for a quick med. Reveals his position. And also breaks his own smoke. Somnus runs forward. They'll find Ramses. He has to be pushed away. No other choice. Even bigger, the fact that Netherward is going to die before this fight begins. The jump up. FY. Shot blocked. They found Pasha. Draining him out, but the circle will cancel it. Here comes the support of the double corner from Arme. He hits the target. Remember, he's got two. Actually, no, he doesn't. The BKB is already out. They need the kills. The BKB from no one. It'll be worn off. And now he's asked it. But the shot block. BP. They can't close the distance. They want to kill off Chalice, they'll have to blink down. Rolling Boulder in, the blink in Snowball. Three heroes held together, they'll get the Sun on Roger, the follow up, and here comes the hit. Pasha, you can't regenerate through this. No one is stuck inside the pit of Malice. LGD, they've got the deeps, they've got the kills. Three heroes lost, and they're already pinging mid lane. They want to go straight down mid and do the damage that VP could not do before. Oh my gosh, Toby. Maybe uh, they still have the second chrono. He didn't have mana for it to follow up on that last fight, but you yep. can see the cheese from Chalice. You can't target the Underlord. They have to try and kill the Void of the Lesh. They're rotating top. It's so hard. How does VP defend this, Pasha? The Nether Ward is down. Somers, you can see, he wants this thing gone. The Crepify will keep it up for a little bit longer. The Observer Ward also removed, but it won't matter when LGD, they finish up what Somnus started only five minutes ago, pushing in through the top, but they're not done yet. The shards, it doesn't block in no one. The pressure onto the tier three tower in mid. No one blinks in, caught in the pit. So is the Bane. They snowball, they're coming up, but who are they? They're going, okay, they're going nowhere. They're actually retreating. Run away now, LGD. You've had bad fights here before. This may be another one. They need that Underlord. They need him, but are they a three man chrono? DK's just watching. There's nothing he can do. The Bane is down. The BKB protection is there. Terra Blade. Ramsey's must die before he's done this. He's done this, FY. Ramsey does the damage to continue to stand and fight. Somnus in too deep, not a lot of man to work with, and now surrounded by four heroes. They're trying to help him out. The defensive Yule Scepter and the Lotus Orb. Somnus nowhere near enough knife to survive. He'll deny himself with the Bloodstone. A top lane of Rax claimed by LGD, but maybe doesn't have buyback. He's dead for 80 seconds. Can VP push back down the mid? Oh my gosh, they'll have meta to do so, Toby. Oh my goodness, you can see. Once Ramses gets, they only kill him during Chrono. As soon as that fades, 
BKB, Sunder. Yep. He's too good and he's too cool and collected. He will never choke in these big pre big pressure situations. He gets it off. They end up chasing down maybe. But as you said, he bought a Hex. No buyback for They're two coming. minutes. They're coming. Uh, Chalice, Arcane Rune as well on the Chalice TV. Chalice actually committed his buyback as well. He bought a full heart just before this will begin. So the only buybacks available are Disruptor as well as Faceless Void for LGD. Can they defend the lane? The mid tower easily killed off by Pasha. The Ned the Ward positioning again. Perfect. You remember, last fight, Solo had walked in and died without casting There's a spell. Jump. It's a real 5 on 5 this time. Okay, 5 think, on 4. I think no one's realized that he can't defend this. Let the mid racks go. All they need to do is to delay the attack. Let the racks be a clean trade off, but you know VP will not accept this. They push down to the bottom lane. The tier 3 tower, primary objective, and it's already gone. The blink in from no one gets a dual breath versus the main sun onto FY. He's got one charge, but that won't be enough. No buyback available. 12 seconds till the shrank. How much did LGD sacrifice when they lost that hero inside of VP space? We're finding out now. Fortification buys a little bit more time. Three seconds till the shrank. VP, bail, bail, bail. Need to get away, and they will. They get out a long time before LGD could even think about getting an extra kill. Okay, a couple critical things to set up for these next fights. Earth Spirit, Roger's Earth Spirit is just dying till the Shrek. Every fight he rolls in, takes way too much damage. He has no Glimmer Cape, no method of sustain. As soon as he rolls in, he's in trouble. Maybe when he's down, they don't have damage. And VP can play with Reckless Abandon. They have no oh, real fear. Oh, they're all coming top. Yep. They know there's no meta. Everyone but Tuska. Well, Obviously, because he's dead, they're not forcing it too hard. They all brought, wait. They saw him on ward. Uh, they saw them on the ward. That's why no one backs off there. The last minute or so of this ward on that high ground. But it's LGD to back the off. Like they commit, they commit the Dark Rift to grab three heroes <laughs> up to the top lane and then just, nope, they don't want it. They can't. It's just so difficult. Even without meta, they need to commit so hard and they know there's going to be buybacks available on the enemy team. Although no one, or sorry, Ramses is about 60 gold away from his. He just purchased something as well. Yeah, it's going to be a Moon Shard. He's just going to eat that. Then this is where TB is about as strong as he can possibly be until the rapier. That's the timing if you want one where VP becomes like as strong as possible. Here's the replay of this little engagement. They have the arcane rune on the TB, so he has no fear. And you can see how far back LGD has to play. They don't have Chrono for 20 seconds. VP can just walk down the lanes. They get this nice pick off on the Tusk as well. There's Definitely no, the key just, target. There's just no initiation for LGD to go on. Yeah. And and look, look at how they were fighting there. Pugna, the two supports in the back, DK Terrorblade, spaced far enough apart that a Chrono can't catch both, beating into one to one target. And there's a DD bottom, Toby. This is it. Arcane Rune DD. Once you hit this oh. late game and you get the double rune spawn. He gets both? This is what Terrorblade wants. Oh, this is... This is a happy, happy Terror Blade plus 312 damage to his base 192, and he's running a Daedalus. Yep. And the only thing that would make this better is if he, well, he doesn't even need the rape. You're having a Bloodthorn at this point would make this even greater. LGD, it's defense time. Uh, then again, Ramsey's he's waiting for Roshan. Roshan's a long spawn timer. It's actually the worst thing that could happen for, for Versus Pro right now. It's a three minute spawn timer on Roshan. So for all the cool stuff we look at with the double yeah. damage and arcane rune, Ramsey's will actually do nothing with it apart from farm up a couple of jungle creeps. That all comes back to lane push. It's because this top wave was all the way pushed top. They can't really get a window to kill this tier two. Quick note. The Dragon Knight choosing to go for 150 GPM as his level 20 talent instead of the double Dragon Blood HP regen and armor. Mm. Mostly because he's dying to the Underlord and the Lesh more so than any physical damage, but it also means he will scale significantly faster as this game continues already surpassing Void. And maybe he's the one that buys the Rapier. 6.4k gold yeah. onto no one. The pressure is here from Virtus Pro pushing in the top. But thanks to that hard on Chalice, he feels really confident to be the frontline tank for LGD. So they don't have to give up the ramp when they have when they can just have Chalice on the front lines. The big item, as you can see, Disruptor, 1,400 gold away, the Aghanim's Scepter. If he can get that, they have the ability to 100 to 0 a Terrorblade very easily because he'll be nullified as well as silenced. It's a shame he's not level 20, so he could have 180 gold per minute. Then maybe he would finally reach that. Indeed. And it's, it, that is the critical item, because then you have this window where you can kill Terrorblade, because right now, their only answer is during Chrono, and straight up, he has 34 armor and a BKB. He's always going to get the Sunder off. There's the money from No One. It's a nullifier for the yep. Dragon Knight. It's the right item choice. Yep. Going to make life even more difficult if he goes on to Latrak or Faceless Void. 
Either way, it'll be a victory for him. Makes Chalice very important here. He needs to get the Lotus Orb on the Nullifier so that the core that gets initiated on is free to BKB. Smoke up from LGD. No one. Really close, but not close enough to break the smoke. He's under the cover of an Invis Look rune. Where the are they bit. going? Really? Into the middle of Roshan. They'll walk out. They'll find Roger Quick blinks away. Chronosphere! It catches two! LGD! Did they just make the greatest play ever? Only for help to win the team fight. Ramses has the high ground position with the Metamorphosis. He's focusing Somnus. Somnus has no way to live through this one. Now, you'll set the fight time. The storm is great from the Disruptor. X Nova, the man that was still inside the pit. VP have lost two and now they can re-engage LGD. They flip him like a pancake. In for the Walrus Punch. There goes Ramses. There goes no one. LGD. Pull it from the rear. They just crapped on Virtus Pro in front of Roshan. What a play, Toby. It's because they have this ward. They have the ward to the right of the Roche pit. They see enemy heroes in the vicinity and they just go all in. That's playing to win, baby. That is... Man, I haven't seen a use of Dark Rift that good since Sir uh, Universe. That is a beautiful play that will go down in the history of Dota. LGD, now they have the advantage. The buybacks are available from Virtus Pro. The only one who cannot oh. is the Pugna, but it's all about Roshan. It's now the second refresher shot. It's another cheese in Aegis. They can scout it out, and there is no real way for Virtus Pro to contest this. They'll kill it, they'll kill it fast and gain the advantage. Buybacks. They can use oh. it, but it wouldn't help, Toby. They kill it way too fast. To just reiterate, the stakes of this game are so high. LGD currently outside of the top eight in DPC, but they win this game, and all of a sudden, they're getting a TI invite, and it all rests on the fate of the rest of this game. You know, LGD have reached two finals in the Dota Pro circuit, but never have they reached the finals of the major. This is, as you said, massive for them. A victory here, top eight. They'll push EG out of the top eight if they can claim it, and LGD, they're looking towards the mid. Now how, how, Kyle, do they not screw this up? Just use your spells. They have the <laughs> Ags on Disruptor. VP has to trade Chrono and specifically Disruptor ult on a hero that hasn't used any abilities with buyback remaining. Well, wait for the jump, Faceless Void. He can Chrono, attack, burn the Aegis, switch in the Refresher shot, then go second Chronosphere. This means double BKBs as well. There's your jump in, and he found no one. He found the Dragon Knight. The save from Nightmare by some time, but not enough. Pasha giving him the life, giving him the juice, but down goes the DK. No buyback of Battle of the Glyphs. They found Pasha, time violate, but even better. Three men walked in, Murder's Pro. They are pushing up the daisies. Manure for the LTD Garden. They're going for the GG push. They just won the Team 4 Towers. Murder's Pro, they need more power, but they don't have it. The BKB not available for Ramsey. Hexed up, controlled, stunned, Pasha. He'll be glimpsed away, not in range for regeneration. The tier four tower, he'll finally go down. Ramsey's pumping up the metamorphosis. He needs to fight this hard. Pasha draining out to grab find the Underlord. LGD, they need to still fight this one. They don't have the mana currently to go for a secondary chronosphere. So they keep the pressure going, but the damage from the side is also too much. Charles is dropping low. They're trying to finish off the egg, off, off the throne. Finally, the Aegis model, it will pop. Void will have the mana for the secondary chrono. They jump over, focusing Ramsey. He's the last man standing for Bonus Pro, really. He is the only hope. Pasha giving that hope life, but it's not enough. That could be the game. The buyback, the chronosphere. It's too good. Swap the life all you want, but the fortress is gone. GG, LGD, 2-1 out. Bonus Pro reaching their first ever major final. What a play. They've been plagued by team fight problems against VP. The game two was a bloodbath. But LGD, they step it up when the time counts. God. What a dark rift. What a fucking dark Unfucking rift. Fucking believable, Toby. That is what I love to see. You've got these critical situations. They've lost a couple of crucial team fights, but they know they have to make something happen. They sit the cart in the road pit for a full minute and a half. TP in the moment they get a stitch of vision, and you can hear the crowd going absolutely nuts. A hometown team in the finals, currently a spot to go to TI, unbelievable, and they still have another match to play. How do you recover from that to you, go to go play five more games? You take a break, you enjoy the show that's coming very soon.
And then you think about how you defeat, defeat Maneski, a team that have had great movement, great momentum throughout this tournament. And LGD, it'll be a hard ask for them to actually do it back to back. It's so much effort to now bring down VP, but they could take what VP normally do. That momentum of victory, carry it through. You're warmed up, you're fired up. This crowd's fired up, I'm fired up. I can't wait for the grand final. The nerd chills are out in full effect right now. LGD become the first chance for China to win a major throughout the entire three years of majors. And just to, just to cap this bit of history right now, the reign of Europe and CIS is over. It's an SEA or a Chinese team that wins a major for the first ever time. Our three panel members will break down the third and final decisive game that allowed LGD to move on to the grand final. Lacoste, what did you make of that? Yeah, I rate uh, this Overlord service uh, six stars, definitely. <laughs> like the dis <laughs> displays uh, with the uh, siege creep inside of it. And uh, I mean, I think they had a really good chance to even closing this game early on if uh, if Ame placed uh, some good chronos. As <laughs> I, I, I mean, the, the way this... Uh, Game started again for the for Virtus Pro. Same in game number one. They had the both supports 15 minutes in being level five, and you have a terror blade, so you can't really pressure uh, that much. They took uh, down tier one tower on top, but after that, like you you don't have a reliable um, stun. You don't have anything to start a fight with, so you're actually relying on LGD to make a move, and then you make a counter move. Yeah, uh, that was just after that Roshan fight, which you know LGD. You could see in the booth they were kind of resigned to their fate a little bit there, Will, and uh, it was the next Roshan fight that actually turned the game around. Yeah, I think LGD at some point probably thought that they were going to lose this game or they felt it slipping out of their hands, but they made so many clutch maneuvers. They did not play like your typical conservative team where you're playing against a team like VP and you're scared to lose, so you're just not making aggressive maneuvers. Dota, especially nowadays, it favors teams that are going to get aggressive and make those game-winning plays the decision, like Lacasa, to go into the Roche pit, that was so gutsy, but it pays off consistently. Uh, their high ground decisions as well without Aegis or anything. I like that they at least went for it every single time. Like some of their pushes failed, but you could see like the mentality shift where they're playing to win. I kind of agree too that Ame might have been a little bit underwhelming here with some of the Chronos and his target firing, but and at the same time, LGD like as a whole played this game brilliantly. Mm -hmm. Like FY with that cheese steal or uh, the refresher steal. That might have also helped secure them the game. If you give TB the opportunity to get uh, two metas off, then they can maybe turn that into a push after, but never really able to capitalize too hard. Yeah, to really emphasize the, the heroes that are picked up here, if you look at VP, right, you've got this Dragon Form, you've got uh, Metamorphosis, two like very long cooldown, big team fight abilities. You actually have to be aggressive if you're LGD if you want to be able to win these fights. You can't allow Virtus Pro to be able to set up with these kind of spells and be able to get the successful team fights that they want. You have to force them into an awkward position. And that's what we're seeing through the latter half of so many of these team fights is LGD um, being able to force something onto VP. And even if the initiation doesn't quite fully play out the way they wanted to, they back out, they reset, and then re-engage after the BKBs are down or maybe even waiting until Dragon Form or Meta Metamorphosis yeah. is dead as well. At this point, pretty much game was over. Everyone had the buyback on side of LGD. So even if uh, they somehow won a fight, they could just easily come back with uh, Underlord Ulti again or just TP back to to a fight and uh, just finish the game. Yeah. Cap, I, Cap, is this a game that Virtus Pro should have won? Uh, I would say that it's like... No, I wouldn't say that they should have won it. I would. I think this game was actually probably the most even. Uh, I don't think there was ever a hugely significant advantage one way or the other until the bitter end. Yeah, there's like a cool decision-making process too for maybe to go for the Hex uh, to counter the TB. So the TB oftentimes, like you pop your meta, you use your BKB when you're as close to full health as possible. Then you take the fight. When his BKB is down and he starts to get low, he's looking for the Sunder. He almost always gets hexed. Maybe he held onto that thing for such a long time. He plays these team fights very patiently overall. This is very well done by LGD. Like This was a very good group effort. <laughs> yeah, I think Ramses knows there was an opportunity yeah, to I win think this I, game. I, thought I, I think that's why the disappointment, isn't it? Yeah, I thought they might... Uh, Wanted to go for tier fours when Ramses picked up uh, DD and Arcane Rune, so mm, yeah. maybe that could have been a time to, to close the game. Not not sure who had the buyback back back then. 
And it's crazy because they went from winning a team fight without Metamorphosis at 38 minutes, and then five minutes later, they're losing fights with Dragon Form and with Meta up. And uh, there's the scoreboard uh, for you. I mean, not having the best of games on that Void 5, 1 and 12, but maybe propping up the team with 14, 5 and 17 with 35k damage alongside. Uh, just a note for Ramses as well. 8, 3 and 10 and 50k damage on that Terra Blade on the Virtus Pro side. Yep. That is our final scoreboard of the lower brackets. And uh, what we need to do now is pick out an MVP for that match. Are oh, we going to give it to Chalice for Chalice. that? Chalice. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Okay. Nice. Dude had a desolator on an underlord. <laughs> yeah. that, that was boss. Just for the last fight. My dude was trying to win this game. Yeah. He was not just trying to exist. <laughs> he was trying to win this game. Yeah. We we highlighted him and, and his offlane uh, nemesis on the other side, Pasha, at the start of the game because or at the start of the series because they hadn't had an awful lot of love. So it seems a kind of nice ending to the series that he picks up the MVP. Uh, I think underlord might get some. Some nerves. What what day is today? <laughs> we keep on saying it over and over, yeah, right? It it's, feels it's like unloaded. Saturday is... today. We've got a patch due in three days' time. Yeah, because we had a yeah. patch to start up this tournament yeah, yeah. with the group stage, yeah. right? So yeah. so three days' time. Mm. So uh, no more no more Dark Willow. No more. <laughs> No, no, I, ju I just taxi. feel feel the uh, Underlord's uh, aura in the late game is way too strong uh, mm -hmm. against the cores that uh, rely on physical damage. It's just way too much, 40%. Right. Well, and after. I would say the Roche is a problem as well. That yeah. maybe shouldn't work on Roche as well. Yeah, yeah we'll see what happens on Tuesday. Uh, for now, though, uh, let's take a look at the brackets. Uh, we've had all of our matches bar one series to go. We've had 111 games now at the Dota 2 Asia Championship, and it all ends this afternoon with Mineski going head-to-head -head with LGD. Just a reminder for you, it will be a brand new major champion. The reign of OG Secret Invertus Pro has come to an end after nearly three years of domination. It's an incredible record, Will, isn't it? Yeah, that's, I, I think there's going to be some relief too because you don't want to be that team that wins everything. We've seen how that works before TI. I think this will be some relief yes. where it's like you now have something to build off of because if you just keep winning, it'll hide some of your, your flaws, your errors, yeah. your mistakes. If you lose events like this, especially when there's enough time to make change, I think this is the perfect time to lose an event like this for no. a team like VP. Yeah, six more events to go after this one as well. Two more minors, four more majors. Still plenty of time for them to win more tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, all three. Uh, we are headed to an extended break now uh, before the grand final. Of course, we need to give the players... An hour or so to eat and rest and get ready. And boy, will LGD need the rest in between that. After a brilliant best of three, they've managed to make it back to the grand final. And they'll face off against Mineski this afternoon for the Dota 2 Asia Championship Major. We'll see you soon.